My mom is moving in. I was at the new house. Good job on the move. Huh? What do you mean, new house? Just as it sounds. A new residence. Why are you talking nonsense? Oh? Didn't catch that? Let me break it down. I'm divorcing you. Huh? Why? Because I hate scum like you and your nasty mom. I'm Myra. I left my job when I married Barton, who's three years younger, and for some time I concentrated on being a homemaker. In the early days of our marriage, my husband treated me well. Although I was happy to marry him, I never got along with my mother-in-law, Louisa. She comes from wealth, and I come from a different background. My father passed away when I was young, and my mother raised me alone. Louisa doesn't seem to like my family background, so she doesn't have a high opinion of me or my mom. I won't let anyone speak ill of you, Myra, or your mom because of me. My husband assured me of that. Whenever my mother-in-law tried to say something, he'd interrupt, saying, It's none of your business, Mom. He'd cut her off multiple times to reassure me. I used to picture myself happily spending time protected by my kind husband, but lately, I've been concerned about my mom's health. When I visited my parents' place recently, it seemed like my mom wasn't doing well. I really want to be there for her. So, in between chores, I studied caregiving, thinking it might be useful in the future. To gain practical experience for when my mom might need care, I asked my husband if it would be okay for me to work as a caregiver. Okay, but make sure to take care of the house. Of course, I'll manage both properly. With his approval, I started working as a caregiver. After three years of juggling housework and work, I was pregnant with my first child. When I shared the news, both my husband and mother-in-law were overjoyed. However, they expressed reservations about me continuing to work as a caregiver. Still, I managed to persuade them somehow. I initially started this job to help my mother, and quitting would go against my intentions. Around the time I had gotten quite used to my caregiver job, my phone rang during work. The call was from the hospital, where my mother was rushed to the emergency room. I informed the facility manager of the situation and hurried to my mother's side. Then I was informed by the doctor that she had terminal cancer. Her remaining time was not long. She was recommended to the palliative care ward. After a brief conversation with my mother, I went back home to consult with my husband. I conveyed what the doctor told me to my husband. However, it was a bit awkward to discuss, mainly because my mother-in-law happened to be there today. Oh, I see. Must have been tough for you. Um, do you think we could take care of my mom here? No way. I wasn't asking her. It's depressing to have such a very sick person in the house. When Barton comes home from work, he'll have to be concerned about it, right? It's better to leave that kind of thing to professionals. Well, yeah, that's true. What? If she has a short life expectancy, then palliative care becomes crucial, right? I mean, isn't it tough for your mother to be here experiencing pain? Besides, I don't like coming home from work and having to worry about it either. Despite my husband's previous protective words for me and my mother, he calmly expressed his reluctance. I was very shocked. Still, I bit the bullet. All for my mother. You know why I got a caregiver qualification right? I wanted to care for my mom. I want to be by her side until the end. Please. It doesn't have to be while living together, right? You could visit the palliative care ward. She'll kick the bucket soon anyway. Oh, look here. Your time needs to be used wisely. Really? It's a waste of time. Barton is right. If you handle it, everything will neatly fall into place. Honestly, I won't accept a daughter-in-law wanting to take care of her own mother, especially one who just came here. The 
This is absurd. I could clearly see my husband's true nature. He is not a kind person. He doesn't understand other people's feelings. In the end, my mother was admitted to a facility specializing in palliative care close to our home. I frequently took time out of my work schedule to check on my mother. However, my mother-in-law, who dislikes my mother, and even my husband, never visit her. Moreover, they don't even inquire about my mother's health. I am happy that I am able to conceive a child, but I am disgusted by the fact that my husband is the father. Your belly has gotten bigger. Yeah, the baby is growing well. I'm looking forward to meeting my first grandchild. My mother doesn't talk about my husband, who never shows his face. Even so, she doesn't speak ill of him. It is sad and makes me grow angry at my husband. My mother is getting weaker by the day. When I see my mother, who does not whine even in such a situation, I cannot hold back my tears. Mom, make sure to see your grandchild's face. Of course, I'm really looking forward to it. And two months later, my first daughter was born, and my mother met her. Even at this time, my husband and my mother-in-law strongly opposed the idea. They believed that taking a newborn to a breeding ground for pathogens was completely out of the question. The hospital said we couldn't meet directly, but if it's through the glass, there's no problem. So I'll take her. There's no need to go through all that trouble. Taking a newborn around like that? Isn't that being an unfit mother? It's just on the way back from the hospital checkup. Even so, it's a long journey for the child. Long journey? The hospital is on the way between the maternity clinic and home, right? Barton looked puzzled. He didn't even remember where my mother's hospital was. Stop with the excuses. Some things are just not acceptable. As a daughter-in-law, you should listen to what we say, shouldn't you? So will Barton and you take the child for a checkup? Huh? If I go for a checkup, I'll definitely stop by my mother's hospital. If you can take the child to the hospital, I'll just rest at home. I can't drive. There's a convenient thing called a taxi, you know. That's too much trouble. Besides, it's dangerous to put a baby in a taxi. As long as Barton drives the car, we won't have a problem. I have work. I'm entrusting the child to you. So neither of you will even move for the sake of the child. I'll take the child for the checkup, so it's not a problem. In the end, neither of them had any intention of cooperating, even for the sake of the child. Checkups are for both the mother and the child. So I also have to go to the hospital, but my husband doesn't even understand that. It seems he has no interest in me or the child. Of course, I understand the reason behind it. However, now is not the time to openly discuss it. Right now, I want to prioritize my mother. After the checkup, I headed to my mother's place. After consulting with the hospital, we had a face-to-face -face meeting through the glass in the first floor recreation room. My daughter and I met my mother from the outside. My mother, who came in, in a wheelchair, gave my daughter a wonderful smile. I wished she could hold her. I was resigned to the fact that such a wish would not come true. However, when the doctor signaled to me, my mother in a wheelchair and the director came out to meet me at the hospital entrance. Um, director? I'm not the hospital director right now. I'm going on a break, so this time it's private. I'm just a regular guy. I don't know the hospital rules, but just for five minutes. My mother and I lowered our heads respectfully. Then my mother gently placed the baby on her lap. She's adorable, truly adorable. Myra, you did well. Good job. Even though she's still small, she feels quite heavy, doesn't she? I'm grateful she was born healthy. Thank you. With tears in her eyes, my mother smiled as she looked at my daughter. It brought joy to spend even a short time together with my mother and daughter. However, that night, my mother's condition suddenly worsened. 
I instantly understood that the vibration of my phone around 2 a.m. was a warning that my mother was in a critical condition. What the heck? At this hour? Why didn't you turn off your smartphone? I'm tired from work. There's no way I would turn off my phone under these circumstances. My husband was someone who couldn't even show that consideration. Mom's condition suddenly worsened. I'm going to the hospital. At this hour? What about my breakfast tomorrow? Skipping one meal won't lead to starvation. I desperately suppressed the urge to raise my voice. I didn't want to wake my sleeping daughter. When we arrived at the hospital, my aunt Adeline and her family were already there. Oh, Myra, hold your mom's hand. When Barton and the others arrive, I'll guide them, so don't worry. They're not coming. Huh? Is that so? Yes. My mother was already in a deep state of unconsciousness. Mom. Mom. Myra. Mom. Don't cry. Today... Your dad will come home soon. Let's all go out to eat. Oh, Myra, you're so cute. My mother's last moments were filled with a smile. Until the very end, she smiled. Until the very end, she peacefully entered into restful sleep with our family. My mother did her best with a strong will to see her grandchildren, it was a great relief for me to be able to let my mother see her daughter, even though I was deeply saddened. Afterward, I arranged the funeral, but there was no assistance from Barton's side. Supporting me while staying by my side was my aunt's family. None of Barton or his relatives showed up at the funeral. After the funeral, when I returned home with my daughter, Barton was waiting at the entrance. Bringing a newborn to a funeral is inauspicious. I ignored my husband and entered the house. In the living room, my mother-in-law, Louisa, was present. What's with that gloomy face? We all have a life expectancy. Your mother just reached hers early, that's all, right? Well, life expectancy is a fixed thing. By the way, how much is my mother-in-law's inheritance? Huh? There's no way there's anything. Before going to the hospital, she was living in a rental, right? I can't believe she left nothing for her child. I want to leave this house immediately. I want to divorce my husband and live alone with my daughter. But I don't have the financial means to do that right now. If only I had the money, I wouldn't need to stay in this house. As my mother-in-law said, my mother's inheritance was meager. But if there's a lump sum, I can easily take it from my husband. That's because he is cheating. I've noticed it for a while now. The lingering scent of body soap from his suit. No signs of sweating on his dress shirt, despite being out. I also know he brings his smartphone into the toilet and bathroom. And the decisive evidence was witnessing my husband arm in arm with an unfamiliar woman entering a hotel. I have evidence. Up until now, I had prioritized my mother putting this matter on hold. But now, presenting this evidence, I can demand compensation for emotional distress. I could make my husband pay $30,000 and the woman $10,000. But with my meager salary, can I make my daughter happy with just $40,000? Taking away a father from a daughter who knows nothing. Is it okay to do such a thing? Various thoughts race through my mind. And I find myself stuck. The days of agonizing thoughts continue, and in the blink of an eye, it's been a year since my mother passed away. To commemorate my mother, I had a meal with my aunt's family. My aunt's family took care to arrange everything for me. They are truly close-knit. The love I once had for my husband, who doesn't care about me at all, is already gone. Myra, have you returned to work? Yeah, six months ago. You know I have to work. How much is your salary? Around $3,000, I guess. Hey, Myra, is everything okay with Barton? Things aren't going well with Barton, are they? Yes, but I need the money to raise this child. That's it? What? If you didn't have to worry about money, would you want to leave that house right away? How about it? Since our daughter was born, my husband hasn't shown any interest in her. On the contrary, he keeps saying, 
I hope the next one is a boy. I handle everything at home and take care of our daughter. Even my mother-in-law keeps nagging about wanting a grandson. If I had the money, I would want a divorce. I remembered, thinking that a year ago. Yeah, I want to get out of that place. I want a divorce. I want to live with my daughter. I see. Thank you for sharing. Leave it to me. And three months later, with the prospect of divorce, all that remained was to confront my husband. However, an unexpected turn of events unfolded. Mom collapsed. Pancreatic cancer. What should I do? She doesn't have much time left. Yeah. I want to fulfill my mom's last wish. She wants to spend her final moments in this house by my side. I see. She'll be moving in this weekend. So please, cooperate. As I showed a smile, my husband, with tears in his eyes, said, Thank you. Then I left home for the weekend without seeing the move. I turned off the phone that hasn't stopped ringing all afternoon because it interferes with my daughter's sleep. The next day, I left my daughter at daycare and went to work. My husband was waiting for me with an angry look on his face. Why didn't you answer the phone? Where were you yesterday? I told you my mom is moving in. I turned off the phone because it would wake up our daughter. I was at the new house. Good job on the move. Huh? What do you mean, new house? Just as it sounds, a new residence. Why are you talking nonsense? Oh, didn't get it? Let me break it down. I'm divorcing you. Huh? Why? Because I hate scum like you and your nasty mom. What's with living together? What's with fulfilling the last wish? You make it happen. Don't drag me into your crap. What did you say when my mom passed away? She'll die soon anyway, so it's a waste of time, you said, right? I'll return those exact words. Your mom will die soon anyway. You should both drop dead together. I didn't say it like that. I'm sorry, Mom. I spoke foul words to someone who doesn't have much time left to live. But please forgive me just this once. I want to let out what I've been holding back in front of my daughter. I'm not ready to say it yet, but whatever. You're cheating on me, aren't you? Huh? It's probably true, right? Because I work in caregiving. You thought I'd take care of your mom while you enjoy lovey-dovey time with your mistress? Are you stupid? I'll demand full alimony. So please disappear and stop bothering me. My husband stood there dumbfounded. Afterward, the divorce with my husband was successfully finalized. I managed to secure both shared assets and alimony, all thanks to the help of my aunt. It was my aunt who also gathered additional evidence of the affair. She also covered the investigation expenses. That's not all. My aunt offered me a room in one of her own investment apartments. The location is very convenient and it's a property that I would normally be able to afford. She let me have the apartment with just the maintenance fee. I am truly filled with gratitude. Despite already being divorced, my ex-husband frequently contacts me, complaining about his miserable situation without me asking about it. I can't stand my mother being so selfish. She's going to run away. She said she would get married. Maybe we need professional help. You should rely on the hospital. No, it takes a long time, and I don't know if it'll work. Besides, $5,000 a month is tough. Oh, you know, you spent it all on your affair, took child support, and shared property from me. Thank goodness, I got a lump sum for the child support. You squandered so much money. Mara, if you look after everything, I'll pay. How about $50 a day? <laughs> Seriously, I'm glad we got divorced. I hung up the phone just like that, and I blocked all of his contact information. My ex-husband is worn out from being abandoned by his affair partner and exhausted by his selfish mother. His mother, frustrated by her inability to move as she wishes, is increasingly irritated by her inadequate son. Just knowing that was enough to lighten my heart. Let's move forward without looking back at the past. In the not-so-distant future, I plan to raise my daughter without relying on my aunt. For that, I need to work hard at both my job and parenting. I will cherish and raise my daughter just as my mother did for me. I'm sure everything will be fine. Because 
My mother is watching over us.